Today we are going to go over how to fill out the CAR RPA uh, pre-signed fillable contract, the one that we made for ourselves. We are not using WinForms. WinForms is where the original uh, file is. This is our own custom form. So let's go ahead and think about an, a property we want to submit an offer. So everyone will go on uh, MOS and let's just sign on the MOS. We're going to submit an offer on a random property just for fun. So go ahead and log into the MOS so you can have all the information regarding the property. Okay. Let's just look at a random one listing back on the market. Let's just look at that one. Mm, the residential income. Actually, no. Let's click on a single family one dashboard uh, let's just look at pending San Jose let's find a San Jose one any active in San Jose Single family, 200. Okay, let's just submit round of offers. Everyone look up 4035. So I'll court, San Jose, 95127. So now we're gonna run through the offer this is the offer PDF. There's 42 pages, but the only pages you really need for a sale is just 3 to 16. 3 to 16. So let's go ahead and look at the first page. Can we so, get the address again? So 4035. 4035. So L courts. S O S O E L R O courts, San Jose. So make sure to type in the full property address and include California. So I'm going to put a sticky note here. Uh, make sure make sure to type in the full address. Example, one, two, three, four, main streets. San Jose, California, 951. Okay. So everyone got the address 4035, so Elro so Court, so Elro so Court. Everyone type that in your PDF form? Yes? Not yet. Yes? Okay. Feel free to speak out loud because these are um, um, questions. Feel free to ask questions as we come along. So whatever questions you have, someone else might have in the future. So can you look that up? 4035, Sarah Court, San Jose, California. So you good, Ken? Yep. Good, awesome. Andres? Good. Good, okay. Tam? Okay, as you're doing that, go ahead and look on the tax record to find the seller's name. All right? So buyer's name is whatever corporation we're buying it at. Um, make sure there's only one buyer name, buyer one, buyer two. Make sure there's only one at a time, one buyer name at a time. Um, actually, this let's finish. What's that? This one's a trust. So okay. Both? So, if it's a trust, you put both the seller's name one at a time. Okay. Yeah. So, city of San Jose, county of Santa Clara County. APN, the only the fastest way is to look on the tax record, right? So tax record. Tax record. So we will 
go in the tax record and look for the APN 612 we'll just copy and paste that's probably the easiest way copy and paste copy and paste let's go back to PDF where's my PDF here it is okay so copy and paste the APN buyer name we'll just leave at Bellini Evelyn seller name there's two seller names right so we need both their names so let's go ahead and look at the tax record the owner name one is Roderick Enrico 1999 and then there's another Enrico so one is a trust and one under his personal name so why is there two names I don't really know it might be um, for I don't know maybe ass protection or so he can still control it I have no idea why there's two names but we we'll just put two names anyways even if it's a TR do we put in TR do we put in trust let's finish it out as trust because the tax record is limited to space, um, space therefore yeah so let's type it type it Okay, so going back to the PDF, there's two seller names, right? Seller one, seller two. Make sure you put Enrico Roderick on seller two. Everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Everyone on the same page? Yep. Okay, awesome. So financing type, cash, right? It's always cash. We're not going to uh, mark anything else. So buyer's date, that is today. What is today? Four two one eight, right? Okay, so put that on the agent date. Four two one eight too. Uh, the reason why we're putting it for the agent is because we're gonna make it easy for them. All they have to do is sign the contract. They don't have to type in one single word. Okay, purchase price. So let's just uh, play with this scenario. This one is listed for. Uh, 2.5 million. Let's just lowball. Let's just say we want to offer um, 1.5. Let's just say 1.5 million. So we're going to offer 1.5 million just for fun. So go back to the PDF. So we're going to change that purchase price in digits. 1.5, right? Um, it's optional. You want to put de decimals 0.00. .00. Um, I just like keeping it clean. Either way works. Some people like decimals, some people don't. Um, decimals will be more exact, but if you don't do it, it's okay too. So it's okay. Purchase price in words: one million and five hundred thousand dollars. One million five hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So what is the EMD? What is the EMD? What is the amount? Three percent. Forty-five thousand. Three percent. Okay. So I'll, I'll put a sticky note. Earnest money deposit is usually three percent of the purchase price. For cash, sometimes the seller wants ten percent of the purchase price. So the more, the better, right? Mm -hmm. um, but for us, we'll just try to get away with three percent if we can. If they want more, then we'll put more. Some people even put 100%, the EMD, they put the full purchase price to make their offer very aggressive. So it is um, op option up to you how aggressive you want to go on the EMD. So 45000 is the EMD. Uh, loan amount will leave blank because we have no loan, right? And then what is the down payment minus EMD? Down payment minus EMD. That's the remaining, right? Mm -hmm. One four fifty five. Okay. Okay, good. And we'll check investor. We're an investor. Uh, days to close, pretty standard. Just leave ten days, right? If you want to be really aggressive, you can do seven days. Um, or if the seller needs more time, if the seller wants thirty days, that's fine too. More time for us, the better. But initially, we'll just submit ten to make us look more serious. Inspection period, one day is fine. Just keep it very short. 
Um, if you want to be really aggressive, you can do a zero day contingency. Zero day contingency. So I'm going to put a note here. One day is fine for a quick inspection. Um, zero days is if we really like the house and know 100% that we want to move forward. So that's basically saying we remove all contingencies if it's zero days. So just one day is fine. Just keep it standard. Uh, next is closing costs. Closing costs. So first is termite report. Um, we don't want to ask for buyer to, I mean seller to pay, so we'll just leave blank. NHD is pretty standard for seller to pay, so it's only 100 bucks. So seller will pay that. Uh, escrow fees depends on your county, right? So in this case, Santa Clara County, who pays for escrow? Seller. Okay, so we'll just leave it as seller, right? So the notes are here. Seller, Santa Clara County is seller, and then who pays owner's title? Seller. Also seller, right? And then who pays um, the rest? So county transfer tax, who pays that? Seller. Okay. And then you have city transfer tax, who pays that? Okay, so we'll just leave it as 50-50, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. What is NHD used for? NHD is nat uh, natural hazard disclosure to disclose about flood zones, earthquake zones, uh, things like that. So it's only a hundred bucks. So it's a very cheap uh, report that the seller pretty much pays a hundred percent of the time. Okay, so that's that. Maybe I'll put a little sticky note there too. Um, just to describe that. So NHG, NHG reports equals natural hazard disclosure. Natural hazard disclosure. So a report is about 100 bucks and discloses um, flood zone earthquake and uh, gas pipes nearby so it's kind of useful seller pays 99% of the time if you want your offer to be aggressive then you'll just pay it and then the seller might like you a little bit more since you're paying for that cost so escrow fees I'm going to put a note here, escrow fees. So now, go ahead and Google customary closing costs, customary closing costs um, for different counties. So then we can kind of learn who pays what in different counties. Unlock your phone to continue. Wow, what is that? If you say, okay, Google, it, it, it will listen. Nice. <laughs> They're spying on us. Okay, escrow fees. So go ahead and uh, Google customary closing costs. Customary closing costs. Customary closing costs. Alameda County. Okay. So customary closing costs, Alameda County. Let's look at that. So it looks like buyer pays escrow, buyer pays title, seller pays uh, county, and then city is split, right? Yes. So let's go back. We'll make some notes on the PDF. Uh, okay. Escrow is who again? For Alameda? Buyer, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Perfect. Um, what about San Francisco? Who pays escrow? Buyer. Buyer. Okay. What about Contra Costa County? Okay. What about San Mateo County? San Mateo, buyer pays. Buyer, okay. So Santa Clara County is very friendly towards buyers, right? All the other county um, seller usually pays, right? What about Sacramento County? Mm -hmm. Seller pays. Okay. What about um, what? San Joaquin. San Joaquin is um, 50, 50. Stockton. So 50 50, huh? Yeah. Okay. So every county is a little bit different, right? Just a little bit. But for the most part, um, in the Bay Area, for the most part, buyer pays, right? Mm -hmm. From what we've seen, buyer is actually paying a lot, except for Santa Clara County. So we're the only buyer friendly county for some reason. I don't know why. Um, it's customary like that, but it just happens to be that way. Okay, so next is... We can make a comment above one and just uh, copy-paste the escrow fees. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I added that. I just added that right now. So good, uh, good idea. So next one, I'm going to ask the same thing, but for uh, title fees. So what's the difference between escrow and title fees? Uh, title is a policy, insurance policy. Uh, yes, so title is basically just uh, insurance um, for process. clear title. And then escrow is kind of like for, you're paying for their service, which is to um, coordinate closing and um, sure yeah, make sure everything's aligned, make sure the money flows to the right person. Imagine if you're buying a house with no escrow company. And then someone takes, your money. someone takes your money or the seller's going to say, I'm not going to give you this deed until you give me the money. And then the buyer said, I'm not going to give the money until you give them the deed. Just like a car transaction. You have to have trust. Um, but it's very risky like that, right? People get screwed over. So that's why there's escrow uh, companies. And okay, so now let's run through title fees. So who pays in Alameda County? Uh, buyer fees. Buyer, okay. San Francisco. Buyer, please. Buyer, okay. Contra Costa. Buyer pays. Buyer pays. San Mateo. Buyer pays. Okay. Sacramento. Seller pays. Okay. San Joaquin. 50-50. Okay. So same thing. It's the same thing for escrow and title. So that's good. We know that Escrow and title is the same for every county, so we're, we're not so confused, like who pays escrow and title? So it's actually just the same. So next is county uh, transfer tax. We're going to do the same thing for all the counties. I'm going to copy and paste this. Okay. Okay, so Alameda County transfer tax, who pays? Seller, interesting. Okay. The seller, uh, semicolon, city of Alameda, 50 50. So. Okay, so county is seller, city is 50 50. So we'll go city next. Let's just talk about county for now. Okay. So San Francisco, county transfer tax. San Francisco, it says not applicable. So not applicable, right? Not applicable. So why is that not applicable? Because maybe San Francisco and San Francisco city already charges a fee, so the county doesn't charge a fee. Because San Francisco is the same, right? San Francisco City and San Francisco County is the same. Wait, so that's San Francisco I thought seller pay. Seller pay? Yeah. Okay. Let's look at that again. So let's look at that. I'm gonna look at San Francisco. Seller. It says C City Transfer Tax. What does that mean? C City Transfer Tax. That means there's no county. There's no county this transfer. Is C cities transfer tax. So what does that mean? That means that there's only city transfer tax. There's no county transfer tax. Okay. So that's what that means. The county and the city is the same for San Francisco. 
So there is no county transfer tax because the city already charges and the city and the county is the same. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So Contra Costa, who pays for the county transfer tax? Costa is going to be seller. Seller. Okay, perfect. San Mateo. Uh, seller. Seller, okay. Sacramento. Uh, seller or 50-50. Seller or 50-50. Okay, so it depends, right? depends on how... Um, let me look at that real quick. Sacramento, it says seller for the county. Customary closing, yeah, that's that's the same. But if you look under county, it says seller for Sacramento, right? Seller or 50-50. That's interesting. That's interesting. I just say seller. So very interesting. So I don't know why that says. Um, this one's from the map.com. Yeah. So they're all title companies, um, but that is interesting. So maybe we'll just leave seller for now, since uh, first American shown seller, but it could be fifty fifty too. Is it so, negotiable, right? Yeah, it's all yeah. negotiable. It's all negotiable, and it's just it's a small fee, so it's not even that big of a deal. So. Probably the best way is just to put seller. That way it's one less calculation for the escrow company. Okay, so that's county. Now, let's talk about... Uh, so that's county. Let's talk about city now. So I'm going to put tools, sticky notes, and city transfer. Okay, so we'll do the same thing. We'll look at the city now. So city transfer tax. Alameda, who pays? Uh, Alameda is going to be for yeah. the city transfer. Split between buyer and seller. Okay. So 50-50, right? San Francisco, city transfer tax. Is it seller? You tell me. Seller. Okay. So seller pays, right? Okay, Contra Costa. It says seller. Seller, okay. San Mateo. Fifty fifty, all right. Sacramento. Fifty fifty. No CD transfer tax for. Yeah, I think it's history in the different forms. <coughs> There's no CD transfer tax for Sacramento. Um, interesting. So, first American says none, but um. Na national. National title. National American title says their city. So interesting. So it depends. Uh, maybe certain cities doesn't have transfer tax, so it depends, right? Um, but but once again, it's so small that it's not a big deal. So maybe we'll just put depends. We'll just put depends if the city has depends if city has transfer tax. Some city does, some city don't. So a little confusing, but very small fee. So San Joaquin city transfer tax. What about that, San Joaquin? None. none okay so we'll put none perfect okay so those are who pays for what uh, in this particular offer uh, seller actually pays a lot of it so next is HOA transfer fees HOA transfer fees what is that HOA transfer fees if there's an HOA this would apply yes so like condos uh, townhouse will always have HOA, right? Uh, usually, seller will pay. Usually, for the most part, seller will pay. Um, HOA docs. What is HOA docs? Uh, no idea. 
So HOA docs is kind of like paying for, um, what's the best way to describe it? HOA docs is all of the corporation paperwork uh, for the HOA, including uh, expenses for the HOA, so financials, uh, rules and regulations of the HOA, um, what else, um, how the HOA is run, anything relating to the HOA is kind of like the uh, instruction guide for the HOA is all in there. That's HOA docs. Is there a cost for that? Uh, good question. So cost. So that's probably about 500, 500 to 1,000 bucks. Just for those documents that they reuse that they already printed. over and over and over. So it's kind of like a scam. It's free money for the HOA. Okay. Um, yeah. So going back to HOA transfer fees, I'm going to add uh, cost. It depends on HOA. Uh, but could range uh, maybe like 300 to a thousand also so the HOA makes all this extra money just by transferring in the docs okay home warranty do we ever want home warranty um, probably not so we'll just make mark buy waves and amount let's just delete it there's no amount because there's no home warranty so hmm the only time you put home warranty is for first time home buyers that are afraid of everything breaking, so they might want a home warranty. So next is listing office. So now it gets the good stuff. Uh, listing office. Let's go back to the MOS real quick. Let's go back. Where is our MOS? Okay, so listing office. Let's scroll down. Um, listing office we can see is elite realty marketing, right? So let's go ahead and copy and paste that to the listing office. If you want to be very detailed, you can include the listing office DRE, which is also on the MOS. E, yeah, the 91, the 91. Yeah. Uh, that's the broker. So let's, for this example purposes, let's be as detailed as possible. Uh, listing agent we saw was Alex Tran, right? Alex Tran. Okay. So Alex Tran, we're going to copy and paste his name or just type it out either way. So Alex Tran. Let's find his DRE. His DRE should be right next to his name too. Or even click on his name and then his DRE should pop up somewhere. Under license ending in 871. 871. Everyone found that? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And since we always ask these agents to double end for us, so we will just copy and paste. Um, yes, just copy and paste it right over. There are instances if we want to represent ourselves. Um, so let me put a sticky note. Certain situations where we represent ourselves, such as uh, for sale by owner or things like that. Um, so selling office, usually we want to let the listing agent double N, so they are also the selling office. Here's a little bit something uh, tricky sometimes selling office means buyers agents sellers sellers you're gonna hear this a lot sellers agent is just representing the seller right so listing office is also sellers agent but sellers and selling sounds so similar right uh, it gets a little confusing, but selling the person selling the house is um, the bar agent. Okay. Additional terms these are for financing. This is something if we want to put like um, um, buyer to have right to obtain um, hard money financing, 
Um, but what I found out was that it makes your offer look weak. So we don't include that anymore. When you include that, people are curious, like, hmm, maybe you're not cash. Maybe you're just faking it, which we are for the most part. We're always faking it that we have cash. So, um, additional terms. Let me type that. Additional terms. Page one. You can add things like a uh, buyer have right to obtain hard money financing, or you can put things like uh, uh, any anything relating to the financing. Those additional terms. Other terms. Page two. Um, we just have to disclose buyer has real estate license because we do, or I do at least. So anytime you have a real estate license, you have to disclose. So just put it to be safe. Okay, next is all buyer's name. What does that mean, all buyer's names? That means you have to type in both buyer one and two. So why do we have to type both um, buyer one and two? Why is that? <coughs> Because the top part, it was broken out bar one, bar two, right? right. So you have to type both bars name. Uh, example, John Tran and um, um, Lisa Tran. Something like that, right? Because the contract, certain parts of the contract, it's one line. So let's see where that makes sense. So certain parts of the contract is one line for the buyer. So, for example, page, uh, let me see, what's a good example? Page one. This is an offer from uh, Bellini, Evelyn, and buyer two, right? So, those type of lines, you have to put the and. Um, but other parts of the contract, it's only one bar names. So for example, page mm, page 17, the buyer's name is one by one. So that's why we do that. Does that make sense? Yes. One is buyer, one is just buyer by itself, and one is buyer one and buyer two, just for the contract purposes. Okay, next is you can type in the listing office address and all that. So we're going to find that on the back to the MOS, right? So in order to submit an offer, we have to have the um, MOS on. Otherwise, we're missing information. So let's go ahead and copy the address, 2161 Jonesport, into um, office address. Yeah, and then it's San Jose. Nine five one three one. Always put the telephone and email because we kind of use this as a way to store their contact information too. So put in their email and then back to MOS. Let's put in his phone number. And since he's double ending it, do you have to put it on the selling office address yes. on the bottom? Uh, yes, it'll look more complete. And it's very easy. It only takes like five seconds. Copy and paste. Copy and paste. Copy and paste. Okay, done. So just by filling out the first two pages, the rest of the contract is actually completed. So that's why we have a cover form because you don't have to jump around and you don't have to jump around and uh, go back and forth. So a cover page helps out a lot. Okay, so let's look at disclosure regarding real estate agency relationship. Can I check, can you go back to the second cover page? Second. Yeah. Okay, second cover page. Um, there are other check boxes. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because this is if it's a residential income property, it's a different contract. For the most part, we are just single family. Um, <coughs> I don't think we have the residential income contract in here, so this doesn't really apply 
um, for this particular PDF. But if we want to add that, we can add residential purchase contract for multi-units, duplex, um, triplex, and all that. Okay, so let's jump to page three. Disclosure regarding real estate agency relationships. So what does that mean? Disclosure regarding, what does that mean? Anyone know? It's uh, explains uh, how the realtors, um, their duties to the clients. Yeah, explain um, who or which agent is representing who and their duties. Um, for example, but in the offer form is basically saying buyer agent uh, represents buyers. That's pretty much this long things. That's all it's saying. Buyer agent is representing buyer. So buyer agent Alex Tran is representing buyer, right? Bellini Evelyn LLC. So that's all it means. And question? Yeah, my form doesn't change. Your form doesn't change. Why, can't, why, why is your form not changing? Do you have the latest version 33018? Mm -hmm. So let's go back to your cover page real quick. Did anyone else forms change? I noticed that on the disclosure, the selling office seemed to have not changed. That's weird. So there's some glitches. How come my changes? That's weird. Mine changed. Why is that? The date didn't change either. There is a glitch. It might be because of my PDF. I don't know. Why is there a glitch? Because mine changed perfectly fine. What about yours, Andres? Did your uh, change? What part? Okay, let's go down. Let's go down to page three. Yeah, his change. Which Very one? weird. Are you, what are you I using? think uh, so. He using Acrobat Pro DC is that mm -hmm. what he used? Mm -hmm. Pro DC. Pro DC. I think so. Okay. You see, yeah. So Mine is not. That really might be why. Okay. So there's a glitch if you have the older one. That's weird, right? Um, so we'll find a way to solve that. But it's not a PDF thing. So we'll solve it after. Good. Okay. So going back to agency relationship. Um, disclosures regarding real estate agency relationship. Basically saying buyer agent represents buyer. Buyer agent Alex Tran. He has to sign right here um, to make sure he's representing us. And look how complete this is. It has the date. It has the DRE, BRE license. It has our signature. It's very, very complete. This is the second page. Just more verbiage on uh, who's representing who. You can read through it, but sum it up. It's just agency, re agency relationship. Next one, possible representation of more than one buyer or seller. What does that mean? That means that they are not, um, the agent doesn't have to work with just one client at a time. Uh, yes, so possible representation of more than, what is that, of more than one buyer or seller. So what does that mean? What does that mean? That means that um, sometimes, this happens often, Two agents in the same office could write up an offer for the same listing. So agent one and agent two. Um, so basically it means that the same office is representing different clients. Same office representing different uh, clients. Sometimes it could be conflict of interest because the buyer might say, well, um, you told my offer to the other agent and that's why I lost. You told the other guy to put in $1,000 more. So it's just stuff like that. Same office um, representing the same buyer. So that's what that's what that disclosure is for. Just to make sure that there might be a possible representation. And everything's filled out completely. Seller has to sign, buyer sign, agent has to sign, right? 
Um, I do see one missing date for the agents, right? Mm. So I'm gonna add on the forms. I'm gonna add on forms. I'm gonna put date. So forms. Control C. We're gonna put one more date box for the agents, and that's the only thing we're going to do. What about seller? Seller will date it when they date it. We don't put the seller's date. We're not uh, on their side, right? They will date it when they date it. Wire fraud and electronic funds transfer advisory. What is that? It's a warning. It's just a warning, right? That before you wire anything, make sure you call the title company and um, confirm the wire instructions because people hack into emails and email fake wire instructions that happened that actually happened once. Someone hacked into email wire emailed over fake wire instructions and then the person wired like half a million to a fake account out of seas and they never got the money back. So ever since that happened they included this disclosure. So it does happen. So buyer and seller to sign. Now is the good part. Let's go to California residential purchase agreements. Um, as we look through, date prepared is perfect. It filled through. Offer form. Offer from Bellini. Perfect for the address. Um, I I purposely made the bar name big just so they remember our name over and over and over. Bigger than the address. So San Jose City, Santa Clara County, APN, that transferred through nicely, right? I see a little overlap, so I'm going to fix that. Small little overlap on the APN, no problem. Okay, that's all fixed. One, $1,500,000. Um, closed escrow shall occur on 10 days. So we have to check mark that box. So I did not check mark that box. So I have to do that. Uh, next is agency disclosure. The party is acknowledged receipt of disclosure regarding agency relationship. Let's mark that because everyone received the agency re relationship disclosure. The listing agent is representing. If the listing agent is representing only the seller, we mark the seller. But in this case, we mark both buyer and seller because we want him to double N. So, sticky note. I'm going to put a sticky note. If a listing agent is only representing the seller, mark this box. Can we just the latest one? Late December 15th, something? Yes, that's the latest one, yes. Okay. And then, sticky note on both buyer and seller. Mark both buyer and seller. If the agent is double ending, okay, and make sure you mark that in two spots. There's two spots, so it's kind of hidden between all the blueness. Uh, next, initial deposits mark other 24 hours because we do want to send in the deposit quick. We don't want to stall. This says three business days, but we're going to make it quick. So $45,000, perfect. Uh, all cash offers. So how did this fill in all the way to here? Because we marked the cover page all cash. So if we mark all cash, then that same X gets applied here. So all it is is a forms tool. Okay, additional financing. This is the part on the first cover page where we said um, buyer has right to obtain hard money, but we're not going to do that because it makes the offer look weaker. So going back to the first page, and then balance and down payments. So everything we type in the color, cover form, 
um, transferred through nicely. Uh -huh. So there's no glitches. Um, 1.5 is the total price. We oh. initial the bottom. Perfect. Let's look on the second page. Any Three. questions on this page? Yeah, I do. 3A, since you say 24 hours, mm -hmm. should we cross out three business days? No, because okay. it's it's uh, normal. You don't. So with contracts, never ever cross anything out, ever. But is this okay, this supersedes? So if you write a comment, it supersedes anything already there, right? So it's known, it's normal to just x that, and that supersedes the with, within three business days. So you x other? Is that other, that's correct. Yeah, X other and then 24 hours. So that supersedes the three standard three business day. Because it sounds like you going to do something other than electronic planning, cash check, mm -hmm. or personal check. You're going to do some other method yeah. 24 hours after. So good point. We can put wire 24 hours Okay. to yeah. be more specific, Perfect. right? Uh -huh. Okay, very nice. So wire 24 hours. So it sounds very serious. And we do like to wire because it's very clean. Um, we don't like to do personal check, and we don't like to do cashier's check because it can get lost along the way. But wire is super clean, and you have a nice um, uh, record of that. And you can give proof to the seller, hey, I wired it. This is the confirmation. So wire is more serious. It's a good question. Uh, any other questions on page one? Yeah. Um, in some cases, if you want to make your offer very, very strong, so tool, I'm going to put a sticky note, increase deposits, increase deposit. This is an interesting tactic. So increase deposits. So you can say after, uh, let's just say after inspection period, if you had one, um, buyer to... Uh, what is it? Buyer to increase uh, the earnest money EMD earnest money deposit to a uh, hundred thousand. So people do this to make their offer stronger. And then the seller is like, "Wow, you're putting more money into it. So I I like you more." Most people don't, but just in case you want to make your offer uh, stronger. Okay, does that make sense? So just increase the offer if you want to impress the seller. Increase the deposit, I mean. Okay, we're not gonna deal with the loan part because we're not alone. We're not F shade any of that. So it doesn't. It's not applicable to us. Okay, moving along, page two. Page two. So the address went through nicely. Um, the date went through nicely. Verification of down payments. That's if you have a loan and the seller really wants to know that you have enough money. Um, but us, we give the proof of funds up front, so we don't need to uh, do that. Delivery to seller written verification buyer down payment and closing costs. Verification attached. Maybe we can even mark verification attached because we already have uh, proof of funds, right? Yeah, so let me add that tool. Um, forms. I'm going to add a checkbox for that. Checkbox, throw it right here. And then close. And then verification attached. So that means that we have proof of funds attached. So appraisal contingency, there's no appraisal. So that's why it says not contingent. Loan terms doesn't apply, right? So no loan contingency. We made that red so it stands out. So uh, sellers can see that there's no loan contingencies. Other terms, buyer has real estate license. That's fine. Um, you can add other things. Maybe like um, buyer to leave 45 days after closing. This is where you can add anything. If you had an addendum, then you'll mark addendum on 5A, you'll mark addendum. So if you want to say something like 
Mm, addendums for something outside the contract. So what would be a good example? Like rent back. Mm, something like that, yeah. Buyer to pay rent back $2,000 a month or something like that. So we can add on to this contract. So think of the contract as the base and then you can always upgrade um, with little addendums, things like that. So section 7A, inspections, seller to pay for natural hazard. Pretty normal, right? So green is positive, that means we save money. Red means comes out of our pockets. So that's why it's green and red. Uh, seller to pay $99, that's good. And who do they pay? They just pay the escrow company because the escrow company orders the natural hazard disclosure. Okay, page. Now we're on page three of the car RPA. So seller should pay for smoke alarm and carbon monoxide. Is that pretty normal? Mm -hmm. yeah. Pretty normal, right? So we'll just leave that. Um, I'll make a sticky note. Seller usually. Let me throw this in here. So let me put this comments, smoke alarms, and CO2. Seller usually pays. Okay. Um, next one. Seller should pay for cost of compliance with any minimum mandatory government inspection and reports are required. That part I would leave out. The reason why I would leave out is because sometimes the house has code violations and maybe the seller doesn't want to pay. So that part would we'll just leave it out. It's safer to just leave it blank. Yeah, uncheck it. Yeah, uncheck it. Um, so back. What would happen if they have city violations, code violations? So negotiate. We have to negotiate. Okay. Um, but we don't want to put it there because we want to make it easy first. And then before we close, we can say, okay, so we want you to pay um, for code violations before we close. Kind of like Clayton. We want to sell it to pay. But first, it makes our offer look stronger if we don't mark anything. So it kind of leaves it open-ended. We don't know. So this is for code violations and like sewer lateral, uh, things that the county or the city requires. So sewer lateral is required in Oakland. So everyone has to update the sewer lines in Oakland. And we want to leave it open-ended to see who pays for it. Okay, moving along. Uh, section two, two and two looks similar. It's other mini minimum mandatory government requirements. Okay, escrow and title. Now is the good stuff again. So escrow is just customary, right? Whatever is customary in the area. Mm -hmm. Santa Clara County is seller. Good. It it transferred through very nicely, right? Owner's title. Very good. Transferred through nicely. Uh, county transfer tax. Why is it both? It should only be one. Mm -hmm. So uh, there might be a glitch. So going back to page one, there is a glitch. So it should be just seller. So what I'm going to do is fix this glitch. So I have to go into forms. Oh wait, I just unchecked it. I didn't have to do anything. Um, but we want to fix the glitch. You're right. So there's probably extra boxes. So what I need to do is copy the box. So tools, forms. I'm going to take the box from uh, county transfer tax, control C, jump to page 9, and paste that box. That's the box that we need to move over. So we're going to take out the old box because it's not correlating correctly. And we're going to move this box and we're going to resize it just a little bit so it fits in that box. Bam, okay. 
And now we're going to delete that old box. We're going to move the red thing around. Exit. We're going to preview. So I'm going to test this out. If I go back to page one, if I mark county transfer tax, it should correlate to page nine, county transfer tax. Yes. Okay, so now it's fixed. Now it's fixed. So next one, city transfer tax. Who pays? Seller or split? Oh, sorry. Split. Okay, so Santa Clara County is split 50-50, so that correlated through perfectly. No HOA doesn't doesn't apply, right? So now, this page nice and clean. Bar waves the home warranty. We don't care for home warranty. Um, stoves. We'll just leave all that blank because they can take whatever they want to take. We don't really care for their belongings. Um, some people will want to mark that. For example, a buyer that bought gates, for sure they're going to mark everything stays. Stove, refrigerator, because that's all expensive. They want to make sure 100% that stays. Um, items excluded from the sale. This is if the seller is very picky and they say, hey, I want to take my um, TV, dishwasher. I want to take anything. Let them, uh, let them take whatever they want. Next, okay, section 9A, buyer does not intend to occupy the property. We have to disclose that. We have to disclose we're not living here. Um, 9C, if there's a tenant in the house, then we have to mark if there's a tenant. Are we buying it with the tenant or not? Sometimes you might have to buy it with the tenant. It's just uh, the only way to compete. So if there's a tenant, I'll put a sticky note. Uh, if there is a tenant and we are closing with the tenant in there, mark this box. Nine. Nine. C. D. D. Nine. D. Okay. okay. Next is this, a lot of it is disclosures, steps or other disclosures, lead base, blah, 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 all disclosures, blah, 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 natural hazard, what it is, blah, 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 withholding taxes, blah, 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 Megan's law. Um, how about we highlight certain things that might be useful for a buyer? So I'm going to highlight meganslaw.com that might be useful for somebody. Um... Natural hazard is pretty standard. Okay. Okay, next page. Now we're on page 5 of 10. We're already halfway through, right? Mm -hmm. 5 of 10. 5 of 10. Um, condition properties as is. That's pretty normal. I'm going to highlight that. Anything else? If property in condominium, blah, blah, blah. Seller has right. To request for HOA documents, pretty standard condition of property. It said buyer is strongly advised to conduct investigations. That's normal. Uh, buyer uh, indemnity and seller protection for entry. So buyer shall keep the property free and clear of liens. That means buyers should pay for any inspections um, if they did anything or if they messed up the house. So it's basically saying if buyer inspects the house. Um, they can't sue seller for anything if they got hurt for inspecting the house. So sellers want that. That's a good protection clause for the seller. Buyer indemnity and seller protection. Those are the keywords there. Title investing is just pretty standard. How are you going to hold title? So next page. Next page. This is the interesting page. So page 6 of 10, 6 of 10, the most important section is buyer has one day after acceptance to complete all investigations. One day, right? So that's our protection period, one day. And then I put buyer, seller has five days to deliver our reports. Uh, usually the seller will already have all the reports up front, usually. But in, in cases that they don't, then five days is fine. 
Um, if this is the tricky part too, section 14C, if you want to remove contingencies, section 14C, so I'm going to move this sticky notes, uh, removal of contingencies, that means if we want to submit offer with no contingencies, we mark this box. Removal contingencies. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, seller right to cancel. That means um, if buyer does not deliver seller removal contingencies, that's if we, so let's say we had that one day contingency and we did not remove our contingency after one day, the seller could cancel. Uh, so basically the seller could cancel if we don't perform, if we don't send in the EMD, if we don't remove contingencies, things like that. So notice to buy or seller to perform, and it's the same thing for seller. Seller has to um, work on all the paperwork to close too. So, and are they, do they have to close? Here's the interesting, does seller have to close a transaction if you're in contract, yes or no? The seller has to what? Does the seller have to sell to you the house after you sign the contract? If they, you don't perform. If they sign it, then yes, right? If, if, they, if they meet all requirements? No, they still don't have to because they can make up something, right? But the buyer can sue for liquidated damages. What is that? That's for wasting their time, hard money interest. So there is cases where a seller cancels and um, the buyer tries to sue for wasting their time. But if the seller didn't want to sell, then it's fine. You just move on. You don't want to make a big deal, cause lawsuits for what, right? So they could technically still cancel. Okay, close. What clause is that? There's not a real clause, but uh, law-wise, so they can just cancel whenever they want. And the only thing you can do is try to sue for what you lost. Okay. And you have to prove that you lost that amount. So it gets a little sticky if the seller doesn't want to close. Okay, next page. Um, page 7, 7 of 10. Just more disclosures, final walk, final verification of condition. That means buyer, buyer can walk through the house within five days of closing to make sure everything's the same. Uh, it didn't burn down or anything the day before you close. Repairs, basically saying repairs shall be completed if the seller, if the seller promised any repairs, it should be com completed before you close. Proration of property taxes just means everything's prorated. Pretty standard, right? Compensation, everyone gets paid, blah, blah, blah. Joint escrow instructions, that just tells the escrow company to follow this contract. Moving along to page eight. This is the legal page. Legal page. So arbitration, uh, remedies of breach of contract. This is if something happens, let's say seller canceled and don't want to close anymore. Then there's liquidated damages, right? So first, it goes to mediation, which um, try, is like a um, pre-court. Pre-court, yes. They try to solve it before it goes to court because court, everyone loses. The only person that gains is the attorney. So first, they try to resolve it with mediation. Uh, second, if it doesn't get resolved, then it goes to arbitration. That's the verdict is decided by a judge and... Um, you can't argue against it. So it's basically saying go to arbitration before court. Court is the last resort because it's very expensive. So arbitration means uh, there's a third party judge that will dictate what the outcome. And if they still want to make a big deal, then that's when it goes to court. But basically this protects you from uh, going straight to court because it's very expensive. So they try to figure out cheaper solutions first. So moving along, page 9 of 10. Any questions? Questions. Feel free to ask questions too. Questions on page 8? Okay, perfect. Page 9. 
pretty standard. Property's going to be on MOS, attorney fees, and any action preceding arbitration, buyer and seller arising a disagreement. The prevailing buyer or a seller shall be entitled to attorney fees. Just saying if it does go to court and you lose, then you have to pay for the other side's attorney fees, blah, blah, blah. Terms and condition, time of the essence. You have to follow the time frames, definitions, acceptance, agreement, pretty standard. We sign right there, buyer, everything transferred through. Uh, expiration of offers. Do we really want to put that this offer is going to expire? Not really. We don't really want to pressure the seller like that. It's just, uh, we could. We can say this offer is not existent no more as of tomorrow. You only have 24 hours to respond. You could, but you don't really want to um, push Yeah, push the seller so much. Let them take their time. If they want to sell, they want to sell. Don't rush. Don't pressure them. Uh, moving along, page 10 of 10. This is the last page. So good job. We went through the whole contract just like that. So it looks intimidating, but it's actually not an intimidating contract. So we can see seller's name. If seller accepts, then they just X that. Uh, actually, if they counter, if they like the offer, but they counter and they say, hey, I like this, but I want 1.6. So they're going to include the counter form if they want to do that. All the agent information on the bottom, very complete. Looks great. Everything transferred through. Um... Yeah, everything transferred through. The only thing is the buyer agent date. Um, but that's confusing because if there's no buyer agent, then there's a date. That's confusing, so I'll just leave it blank. Or a listing agent date, I'll just leave it blank. Buyer inspection advisory basically saying it's the buyer's job to inspect the house. And that's it. There's just a little overlap on the buy. What's that? Yeah, just overlap on the inspection. Like, uh, what to what type of inspection you should do? Make sure you verify square footage, water and utilities, earthquake, fire permits. It's basically saying buyer, do your job and inspect the house, and get all the reports you ever want on the house. Okay, so let's recap page one. It's just the address and price and how fast you want to close, right? Uh, page two is basically um, loan contingencies and all that, but it doesn't really apply. Page three is who pays escrow and title and all that. So that's the most important part of the contract, one, two, three. Everything else is just disclosures, if you notice. Everything is disclosures. And only page six is the contingency part is important. But everything else is very standard disclosures from California. Um, they just want to make sure you're aware of everything before you buy. So that's that. Any questions before we wrap up this video? Should we actually submit an offer? Okay, so in order to... The next step. Okay, let's go over the steps that we just did today. So first... Uh, first step, we fill in the offer to completion. That's the first step. Uh, second step, uh, print page 3 to 16 to PDF. So it gets stuck, right? So make sure you print PDF. So on my PDF, on my PDF, I have to use Adobe Expert. There's a little glitch with mine. So I have to open with uh, PDF Expert, and then I can print to PDF. So I'm going to print to PDF, and make sure you name it very detailed as much as possible so name the file so offer first we'll call offer because that's what it is right so offer 4035 so I'll we'll start with what it is and then the property address so like appraisal and then property address or inspection and then property address so offer we'll put the city 1.6 Five, right? One for five cash, and then we'll put buyer Bellini. You also want to put who signed buyer Bellini sign, and the dates we signed four two one eight. So something simple like that. Offer. So what it is, and then address. 
and then price and then cash cash makes it look like wow this is cash and then buyer name and when you sign so when you name something always think who what where when wh and how right and what are some action items what are some actions that needs to be completed for that document so I'm gonna print I'm gonna move this back control P for print from pages 3 to 16 uh, save to PDF that's how I do it online and because we named the file like that already we just copy and paste I like to type down what I'm gonna name the file before I even rename it because it's easier in my head just to type it out first and then um, rename it. I don't like to rename it on the spot. So where is this offer? I think it went to my download folder. Okay, perfect. It went to my download folder. Let's look at this. Let's look at the final product. So this is beautiful. Everything's stuck. Disclosure regarding agency. Perfect. Um, wire transfer. Everything is perfect. It can't be any more perfect than this, huh? Man, isn't this beautiful? Wow. It's so pretty. I love this offer, man. Beautiful. Got some red and green in there. We're the only ones that have color. No one has color in the offers. We are very colorful people. Um, it, but it's actually easier for the seller to understand um, if it's colored. So that's why we like a little bit of color. So now, because we named the offer so well, we can copy and paste the offer name into the subject line. That's another reason why I like to name the file so detailed because you can use it as a subject line. And now we're gonna email Alex. I'm just gonna put team, but pretend we're emailing Alex. Say, hello, Alex. We wanted to submit an offer for your listing. Uh, this is all cash and can you rep can you represent us on the buyer side um, also we can um, let you relist after we sell the property and now we have a bonus structure or something we're gonna talk about a bonus structure so they're like, wow, I get the listing and a bonus structure. And then in the offer, we're going to put files attached. In order to submit a complete offer, first you need the offer contract. You need proof of funds. You need um, corporation docs to show that you're serious. And maybe even our company bio, so that way they can kind of get a feel of the type of um, properties we bought. And maybe even the Excel of our history. We give everything up front and like, wow, these people are serious. They're not trying to waste my time. They're not um, newbies. So you have everything up front for the offer. Uh, anything else we can include with the offer to make us stand out even more? Uh, bio. Hmm? L bio. Company bio, yes. Company bio. It's in there, yeah. So that's number four. So first is offer, second is proof of funds, corporation docs, company bio, what else? Excel of history of properties, what else? Maybe that's it. Maybe that might be overkill, right? It might be just enough to um or maybe even invite them. Invite them to our meetup. Say, hey, um also we teach how to flip. Can you come uh, how to flip come check out our uh, meetup end of the month so we're building a lot of credibility first we're submitting a cash offer second we have proof of funds third our corporation is established it's not some newbie corporation that they just made this year um, four company bio they know our team five they see all of our properties and now we're teaching them now we invite them to join us to flip with us and they're like, well, 
they're good and they're willing to teach me. So maybe that might be enough, right? To um to get their attention. Anything else we can do? Any other ideas? Or is that good? Maybe offer them to take them out for lunch. Say, hey, you have time? We can meet up for lunch. Yes. Yes, coffee or something, right? So keep on engaging with them. It's not just a one-way thing. Hey, here's an offer, double N. Let's try to meet up with them. Okay, we're going to send this. That's the sample, but I didn't attach the offer. Let me attach the offer. Okay. Offer, and then I'll put sample. Okay, send, so you can now see what that looks like. And any question before we conclude this one hour video? So everyone knows how to submit an offer now, right? Yes. Very straightforward, pretty easy, right? So now do you feel confident? It's all about the terms, price, right? It's all about the price, that's it. Everything else is pretty generic. Nothing you really need to think about. We're, we'll always leave the one day contingency unless we, um, unless we don't uh, want to or unless we really have to remove it, we'll, we'll remove it. But the main thing is the price. Is it? You're changing one thing, the price and the address. Every time you're submitting offers, you're changing the price and address and the agent. That's it. How hard can that be? Can anyone do it? Can a VA do it? What if we're shooting out 100 offers a day, right? Just shoot it out. Okay, so I'm going to conclude this video.